Yeah, yeah. Hey, last week Tucker Carlson called Canadians mentally retarded. If we can figure out how to use the phone to call him, then he'll be on the show tonight. This is the hour. <laughs> Tucker Carlson, he's a beaut, he's a well-known conservative TV host in the States, you probably know him best at the time when he's the co-host of Crossfire on CNN, he's the guy in the bow tie who got in the scrap with Jon Stewart, well Crossfire's gone, and now Tucker's got his own show on MSNBC, it's called The Situation with Tucker Carlson, and here's the situation. Last week, Carlson ripped into Canada over Paul Martin's war words with the United States. Now taking shots at Canada and us fighting back with them, not new, TV types in America do it all the time, but Carlson? Well, he took it to a new level. Canada is essentially a stalker. A stalker in the United States, right? Canada has little pictures of us in its bedroom, right? Canada spends all of its time thinking about the United States, obsessing over the United States. It's unrequited love between Canada and the United States. We, meanwhile, don't even know Canada's name. We pay no attention at all. First of all, anybody with any ambition at all or intelligence has left Canada and is now living in New York. Second, Anybody who sides with Canada internationally in the debate between the U.S. and Canada, say Belgium, is someone whose opinion we shouldn't care about in the first place. Third, Canada is a sweet country. It is like your retarded cousin you see at Thanksgiving and sort of pat him on the head. You know, he's nice, but you don't take him seriously. That's no, Canada. you don't. There's Tucker Carlson doing his finest work. Uh, that's something obviously we downloaded off the Internet. Uh, that's him on tape. Let's go now where he is in Jersey. Tucker, it's uh, nice to have you on the program. When I first heard this, my first thought was, Thanks, George. this is a cry for help. Tucker needs a hug, and we have socially mandated hugs up here. <laughs> is this a cry for help? Why are you doing this? I think, I think Canada's behavior is a cry for, for help. And let me just say at the outset that I genuinely like Canada. I think Canada is a sweet country. I've never met a Canadian I didn't like personally. They're, they're a gentle folk. They're kind of America's little buddy. Uh, and I like almost everything about Canada except the anti-Americanism in Canada. And I was looking for an explanation. How could this be? A sweet people obsessed in an angry way with the United States. And I, and I came upon the explanation you just saw on tape, which is the stalker syndrome that Canada is involved in. Canada thinks a lot about the United States. The United States thinks very little about Canada. Canada is resentful about no, that. If you want to talk about stalker, and by that you mean we're your largest trading partner and vice versa, I'll give you that. The Bill Belgium thing, Audrey Hepburn was born in Belgium, and they had good, good co coffee, chocolate. That is a good we'll point. We'll take that. Uh, but <laughs> that retarded, is retarded is ridiculous. I expected something a little more clever than the retarded. What oh, is no, that? No, 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 wait, wait, though. I mean, you take, take it back. I mean, not to split hairs with you, George, but take it back to the tape. I didn't say that Canadians were retarded. I don't, I don't think they are. Well, we're like you're Every retarded. Wednesday I play squash with a Canadian who's... Yeah, right. I mean, they're like someone you have affection for, but whose opinion you don't often hear, <laughs> uh, and whose opinion, frankly, you don't take all that seriously. But, it, you know, it's not meant with any malice at all. Um, and I think there are a lot of perfectly smart Canadians. I do think a lot of the smartest and most ambitious Canadians, you accepted, uh, are in the States. There, there is this kind of from the Canadian perspective, tragic syndrome where ambitious Canadians, and I also point out funny Canadians, a lot of comedians, move south. And it's, I think it's good for us. Uh, we welcome them, but it's probably pretty bad for you. No, it works out fine. But here's the thing. Early in the month, our Prime Minister offered some quote-unquote constructive criticism about the, uh, the George Bush administration's environmental policy, and then all of a sudden, the U.S. ambassador to Canada lashes out, and there were some pretty serious allegations that he actually got that directly from the White House, which makes me ask you the question, Mr. Carlson. They are listening to what is being said by Canadian people. They're certainly taking this seriously. Why would they react like that? Well, that's actually a, a smart point. Um, some people are paying attention. I don't think the American public is paying any attention at all. I would, and this is not bragging. This is just a statement of fact. I bet 5% of the population in the United States could not name uh, the Prime Minister of Canada. Again, that's not good. It's bad. Uh, but I don't think average Americans are paying attention. Yeah, the White House, I guess, was, um, was annoyed by that. There is this, you get this feeling of kind of snotty moral superiority, though, sometimes when you listen to Canadian politicians talk, not to ordinary Canadians, but to the people you elect, you know, that we're morally superior. We have universal health care, eh? Right? We're better than you. We're morally 
better than you. And, you know, nobody likes to hear that. First, it's not true, of course. Uh, but second, it's, it's obnoxious. I mean, yeah, I think I, you got, I'm sure you agree with that. Yeah, but I think you can make the point that the, the moral card is played more often by American politicians. And it, it's actually not the American, Canadian people or the American people. It's the same seven or eight people who run both countries that happen to have this little girlfriend-boyfriend right. or boyfriend-boyfriend relationship. We have that here. Uh, so maybe that's what's playing out. But actually, most Canadians and Americans don't actually care about this spat. No, they, they, they don't. But there, you do get the feeling. I mean, I remember I spent part of one summer hitchhiking across Nova Scotia and had a, just a tremendous time. Uh, cigarettes and beer, very expensive. Other than that, very nice. But everyone I talked to in all, of, all the cars that picked me up uh, said essentially the same thing. You know, we're different than you are. We're, frankly, we're kind of better than you are. Nobody we're just more gentle. That. We're just, you know, more... You know, that was the implication. And actually, the truth was, I always thought there isn't so much a big difference between the United States and Canada. They're pretty much the same. And I always thought Canada's problem was it had to look to the United States and to opposition to the United States to form its own identity. There wasn't a Canadian culture strong enough that Canadians would say, yeah, I'm Canadian. This is what makes me Canadian. It was always what makes me Canadian is I'm not American. Well, that's too bad. Well, one of the a lot great of good things, but you got dog sleds and beer and snow and all sorts of good stuff to be proud of. Uh, one of the great things about being Canadian, Tucker, is that you don't have to think about it. We don't have a sports car to overcompensate for something else. It's just not the big deal. Let me ask you a question, and this is a very practical question. Were you pissed <laughs> off? Were you pissed off that Wolf Blitzer stole the name of your TV show? You aired like a month and a half before he did. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's a good name, though. It is a good name. No, I love Wolf. Wolf's a great guy. I worked with him for a long time. No, I think, you know... We came up with it. CNN's not stupid. I worked there for a long time, as I just said, and they saw the name and decided it would, it would work for them. And, you know, I hope it does. I wish Wolf all the success in the world. Pretty different show. His show's got a lot of screens on it. It does, like definitely. Like 10 or 11 at one time. It, yeah, it's enough to give you flashbacks. I know you got smoked by a lot of Canadians uh, in terms of your email from your comments. You have to understand one thing, and one thing clearly. Yeah. We're not afraid of taking criticism. you just got to be smarter than saying retarded, okay? That just be a little bit more. No, than but that. I, I wasn't calling you guys. I, I must say, can I say one thing? Yes. The Canadian people email a lot. Canadians are into the email. I don't know if it's a lot of free time. It's the shorter days because of the, you know, <laughs> the cold weather or something. But they, they're sending us a lot of email. A lot of it's kind of hostile in a passive aggressive way. We invented synchronized swimming. Did you know that? And Emails like that. that we Crack perfected me up. I love it. them. Keep them coming. Tucker, thanks for your time tonight. <laughs> thanks, George.